Welcome to today's briefing. Let's head over to Syria where some shenanigans are going on. But before we begin, I want to thank Dr. Peely, Doctor. Associated Professor with James Madison University, Research Analyst Jack, probably not his real name, Crawford, and Geolex Head of Intelligence Nick Loxton for bringing me this information. I also would like to thank fellow YouTuber Sal Mercagliano for helping me understand the significance of what I'm about to show you. This is a tale of war, a treaty, a smuggler, and his contraband. Let's begin with the smuggler and his contraband. I will present to you evidence that Sparta 4 is transporting war materials from Tartus, Syria to Novorosk, Russia via the Turkish Straits in violation of the 1936 Montreal Convention. This is Sparta 4. A Russian flagged cargo ship measures 122 meters long, 18 meters beam or width, transports over 8,800 tons of cargo at 14 knots. Sparta 4 is part of a small fleet of ships that are owned and operated by Oberon Logistics, but more on them later. Sparta 4 has a history of being used as a tra to transport military equipment. These 2018 photos are geolocated to Vladivostok, Russia. Here you can clearly see the Sparta 4 is loading military trucks. Using a cargo ship to move military equipment is a perfectly legal way to move gear around. In many cases, it's the most cost-effective way of doing it. There is no problem with Sparta 4's behavior at this time. But it is a violation of the 1936 Montreal Convention if a country at war transports military equipment through the Dardanelles, the Sea of Marmara, and Bosporus Straits if Turkey is a neutral country during the conflict. In 27 February 2022, the Foreign Minister of Turkey announced that Turkey would legally recognize the Russian invasion of Ukraine as a war thereby enabling Turkey to close the Turkish Straits, Darnells and Bosporus, to the passage of Russian warships under the terms of the convention. This means any Russian warship or ships performing military duties like arm shipments will be stopped. This is a very important point. Turkey took the step to recognize the conflict between Ukraine and Russia as a war. Whether Russia or Ukraine declared war formally does not matter. Turkey is enacting the convention as if war is declared. The path Sparta IV is taking is violating this treaty. In 2019, commercial vessel Sparta IV began some suspicious behavior by disabling automatic identification system transmission. AIS is required to be on at all times while a commercial ship is underway, unless it's physically broke. Sparta IV began turning their AIS off before entering the Syrian harbor of Tardis on September 26, 2019. On October 1st, Sparta IV's AIS was activated again, but outside the Syrian harbor. From 2019 to 2023, Sparta IV will disable her AIS further and further away from Syria and for longer periods of time. For example, in August 2023, she did not transmit AIS while underway for 12 consecutive days before entering the Russian naval base at Tarta, Syria. When Sparta 4 visits Tardis, the ship moors in the Russian naval harbor, not the commercial side. This is not normal commercial ship behavior. Commercial ships are expected to use the commercial ship cargo berths, not the naval base. Here are surveillance photos from November 2022 of Sparta 4 in Tardis loading unmarked containers, potentially trying to conceal her cargo. This is after Turkey enacted the 1936 Montreal Convention. Is Russia running a dry run to see if she'll be stopped for inspection? It's not clear what might have been in the shipment, but we're just getting started. When Sparta 4 leaves Syria, she only has one destination anymore. It's Novorossiysk, Russia. Sparta 4 regularly repeats this route over and over again. This is the Russian port of Novorossiysk. When Sparta 4 docks here, she docks at the Russian naval base, not the commercial side, as a commercial cargo ship would be expected to. The reason for docking at the naval base is the cargo is of a military nature, not civilian. Her schedule 
is a constant three weeks in the port of Russia and about five days in transit to Syria, and then another approximately five days at the Russian Naval Harbor in Tardis. This is Syria in February 2023. Clear surveillance photos show Sparta 4 with military trucks arranged parallel to the ship. This is the loading position cargo is parked in for the crane to load it onto the ship. And the Sparta 4 cycle continues, about five days in Syria, about five days in transit, and then another three weeks in Russia, when something unexpected happens in May 2023. In May 2023, while en route from Russia to Syria, Sparta 4 lost propulsion near Erenkoy, Turkey. It was moved into the harbor at Istanbul, Turkey for three days. What a great opportunity to conduct a Coast Guard safety inspection or just visit with the harbor master. But that didn't happen because Judas got his 30 pieces of silver. Or is it 30 rubles? NATO had this ship in port for three days and did nothing. Six weeks after losing propulsion, Sparta 4 is photographed delivering what appears to be Tobol field artillery pieces into Novorossiysk, Russia. The cycle of bringing Russian equipment out of Syria and into Ukraine's theater of war continues. Sparta 4 is only one ship in the Sparta fleet. The Sparta network of ships is very simple. Defense Minister Sergei Shogu is overall responsible for all these operations. The Deputy Defense Minister Ivanov is responsible for operations alone. The Oberon Logistics LLC is a company owned by the Minister, Ministry of Defense of Russia. They own that company. That company has two shell companies. One is the SC South LLC and one is the OBL Shipping LLC. Those two companies operate and provide technical support for the five ship Sparta fleet. And in this video, I have shown you who owns and operates the Sparta fleet. And I've provided evidence of the Sparta fleet moving military equipment from Syria to Russia, moving that equipment through the Turkish Straits in violation of the Montreal Convention. That Turkey enabled in February 27th, 2022. It is time for the decision makers in NATO to take action in accordance with our treaty agreements.